The United States just lost 2-0 to Costa Rica away, which is something we're used to by now. However, we have officially qualified to the World Cup. Hi, if you're new here, I'm Filippo, and welcome to Tactical Manager TV, and welcome to another 7 Things We Learned episode, where every day following a U.S. Men's National Team match, we do a video on the 7 things I learned from that match. Now, there's obviously much more than 7 things that we learned, Comment down below what you learned. I will most certainly be reading all of them. Now, we do leave this game against Costa Rica with mixed feelings, right? Happy that we qualify, but some poop in our mouth because, you know, we lost. And not that I have poop on my mouth or not that I have ever had poop in my mouth to know what it tastes like. But it's the taste that leaves on us, right? That's what we get from this 2-0 loss to Costa Rica's B team. So yeah, in this video, there's going to be some positives, some negatives. I can't be all positive because criticism is necessary. But I can't also be all negative because at the end of the day, we did qualify. With that said, this Friday, the World Cup group stage draw will happen. And we'll be doing a live stream, a live watch along A11 Yanks. And then here at the channel, we'll do a post live after the groups are out, analyzing each group and giving our predictions. So don't miss out on that. It'll be around uh, probably 1 p.m. Eastern time on Friday. Also, don't forget to check out the Tactical Yanks podcast. Link is on the description. Us and 11 Yanks have a podcast now. And don't forget to hit the like button before we start this video. Okay, with that said, everyone, let's play our beautiful intro and start with lesson number one. Lesson number one is be happy, okay? We officially qualified, and I'm going to get to the many critical points or negative points that I'm going to talk about throughout this video, but the main lesson is be happy because we are in the World Cup, and it's a wonderful experience that we will experience once again in roughly seven months towards the end of the year. And I know, maybe I am not practicing what I'm preaching, but listen enjoy i will be happy and i know i was mad during the stream but right now i'm happy that we made it to the world cup and so should you there is also reason to be optimistic which brings me to lesson number two lesson number two which is a reason to be optimistic in terms of the world cup is the u.s men's national team is a transition team okay that's how burr ball works best we play better when we are attacking in transition look it's quite clear by now that we don't play well when we hold possession we're too predictable but in transition we act using our instincts and we have players that can do a great job on it greg's 4-3-3 system just does not work with us being you know the team that takes the initiative essentially so this is a positive as in the world cup at least in the group stage there's a very high probability that we'll face two out of three teams that will be more ball dominant than us and in the knockout round we're gonna likely face a team that's more ball dominant than us so as long as greg recognizes that which i think he might have already we could do a lot better in the world cup than we did in the world cup qualifying campaign which brings me to lesson number Three. Lesson number three is the job was done, but the campaign was mediocre. Third place was the bare minimum. And if you look back at the campaign, if the Jamaica goal was not disallowed, if there was VAR at the time, we would have finished fourth. Qualifying third in gold differential and CONCACAF, uh, you, honestly, don't even get me started on that. It's, it's, it's not good. It comes to show that U.S. soccer still has the same issues at upper management and in the program as we had in 2017 till now. It's just that now we have more talented players, a more talented generation, which brings me to lesson number four. Kind of fun, right? How lesson number one, two, three, and four are all connected. Lesson number four is before we change the way we want the world to see U.S. soccer, which was what Greg Berhalter sold us, right? That's what he wanted to do. We need to change the way we see U.S. soccer. We need to change the mentality of U.S. soccer before we can change the way they see us. And the problem is a lot of the people in the media in U.S. soccer and a small portion of the fan base just accepts mediocrity. Look, you should celebrate that we made it. I absolutely agree with that. I did that myself. But that does not block you from criticizing what was a poor campaign. 
turbulent and with very few good performances to say the least from the team that has the most talent and resources in the region the mentality has to change stop the nonsense that we can't win games away believe we're the best team we got to start doing that at least in our region we need to first dominate our region then we can go outside and change the way the world sees us soccer but until we don't change our mentality which is very much a loser's mentality in U.S. soccer. And it's not very American because we're usually the best in everything we do in terms of sports, at least. So, look, we got to change our mentality. And then eventually we can change the way the world sees U.S. soccer. But until then, we continue to be the same old, same old U.S. men's national team. Now, before we go to lesson number five, let's get a quick word from our sponsor. And also, by the way, enjoy because it's probably the last time you're going to see the sponsor. Yes, once again. I'm losing a sponsor. Tired of having big tech collecting all your data and spy on you? Well, our sponsor might have the solution to that. NordVPN is the world's best VPN service offering fast connectivity, most servers, and next generation encryption to make sure that everything you do online stays secure. Plus, you can use NordVPN on all your computer and devices no matter the operating system. With NordVPN's unlimited bandwidth, you never have to worry about a slow connection either. And plans start at under $4 per month. So grab your exclusive NordVPN deal right now by going to nordvpn.com slash believe. That is believe as in B-L-E-A-V. Use the code for 70% off on your NordVPN plan plus an additional free month. It's also risk-free with NordVPN's 30-day money-back guarantee. So again, thank you NordVPN for sponsoring the channel. Lesson number five is about Greg Berhalter. And look, actually more about the players. I know we're not big fans of Berhalter, including myself. In most of the campaign, a lot of the problems and mistakes that happened were on him. But this game specifically... I thought about it, thought about it, rewatched it. It's not really all on Greg. It's mostly on the players this game. Just try to see it this way. Zach Steffen was very bad to say the least. And I'm being nice by saying, picking the words that I'm using here, I'm being pretty nice. Walker Zimmerman, the first goal, how do you lose that? You were ahead of the guy, should have been able to get that ball. Also the lack of grit and determination from the team. They were just being okay with the result because they knew they were getting through with it regardless. It was upsetting to see that from our players, our very talented players that should be capable of beating Costa Rica's B team. And Costa Rica's B team did their job, was, which was to protect home field advantage. And the United States seemed okay with that as long as we were qualifying. So that to me is most on the players. And sure, you can go blame Greg all you want. And I blamed Greg for a lot of things and a little bit in this game as well. But it was much more upsetting to see that attitude from the players and the mistakes that they made throughout this game specifically. Lesson number six is a quick one. I just think it's time to test and give more opportunities to Eaton Horvath. Okay, so Nations League is coming up in June. We're going to have four games. I would personally call him in and play all four games. Let him start all four games. Matt Turner was a little bit shaky last camp in January. Zach Steffen was extremely shaky against Costa Rica and a little, well, actually not even shaky. He was bad against Costa Rica and shaky against Panama. It's time to give Horvath some time, especially because Zach Steffen could still be sitting on the bench of Manchester City leading up to the, the World Cup. And Matt Turner might be on the bench of Arsenal leading up to the World Cup. While Ethan Horvath seems to have the starting job locked in in Nottingham Forest. So just my general thought, it's time to give Ethan Horvath an opportunity. Lesson number seven is something that I really learned by making a mistake. And that is that the point we got at Mexico and Azteca, it was crucial to qualify. And I was wrong. When I did several simulations, I never counted on Costa Rica getting nine points this window, which they did. Which made me believe that the point in Mexico would have been meaningless. But it was crucial because I was very much wrong and I underestimated Costa Rica's ability to get a 9 point window. So yeah, just like some people in the mainstream media that said the Mexico game wasn't meaningless. But it would either be win or lose, right? The draw wouldn't mean much. So a lot of people in the media said the same and I did too. But I was wrong. That point was vital and it got us 
to the World Cup. All right, everyone, that does it for this episode. Hopefully, my lessons were reasonable, not too optimistic, and not too negative. All right, this Friday, we will have the live stream right after the groups drop. We'll be going live here in Tactical Manage TV to break down every single group and give our very early predictions that will totally not be wrong. They will all be correct, for sure. Actually, they're going to be horrible, but who cares? Live stream on Friday. Thank you very much for watching, everyone. Don't forget to comment down below whatever you learned from Costa Rica to United States Zero. We are going to Qatar. We made it. Cuba, which is a place in Trinidad, right? A lot of people were asking if I was saying Cuba. I'm actually saying Cuba. Cuba is left behind. Let the past die. It's over. Thank you very much for watching and have a great day.